One prize President Clinton will not take with him when he leaves office in January is peace between the Israelis and the Palestinians. He tried, but it just didn't work out. In fact, what's happening over there right now is looking more and more like a war, the latest Arab-Israeli war. The fiercest battles in the Middle East were waged right here at the crossroad, at that army post which is there to protect a settlement which is the focal point of Palestinian rage. In this one tiny area, which Palestinians now call the Martyr's Junction, more than 30 were killed and hundreds were wounded. Millions of viewers watch this in-depth news report. Scenes like these of action and injury are broadcast all over the world. Flashed on the screen in dramatic sight bites, presented in a larger storyline, they're a major source of information about the enduring Arab-Israeli conflict. And yet, something is amiss, something that escapes the attention of news editors and viewers alike. Let's examine these images in their original context, the raw footage from which reporters and news editors piece together their stories. Most of the scenes you're about to see were filmed by Palestinian cameramen working independently, employed and equipped by Western news agencies at Netzarim Junction in the Gaza Strip on September 30th, 2000. The Israeli police station is here. The Palestinian here. Next to the Israeli position, there's a factory twice as tall as the Israeli post. Behind are two residential towers known as the Twins. Palestinian and Israeli policemen had been doing joint patrols as stipulated in the Oslo Accords. On this day, angry crowds with stones and Molotov cocktails gathered at the junction, attacked the Israeli outpost, and were joined by Palestinian police firing their guns. This scene, apparently of a Palestinian man shot by Israelis and evacuated in an ambulance, was captured by a Palestinian cameraman working for French Public Television, Channel 2. A shot rings out. The man falls to the ground, clutching his right leg. The ambulance pulls up in seconds. Fortunately, we can see this scene caught from a different angle by another Palestinian cameraman working for a major news agency. We see three men, apparently under fire, drag the wounded man roughly across the pavement toward the back of the ambulance. But if they were under fire, why did the ambulance stop so far short of the man, forcing the others to drag him back, rather than move forward and protect him from the fire? And if he were injured, is this a way to evacuate an injured man? But wait, he was supposedly hit on the right side of the right leg, presumably by a bullet. And yet, as they load him on the stretcher, we see no trace of blood on that side of his right leg. And then the medics load him on the supposedly injured leg, without sign of protest from the casualty himself. Could this scene have been staged? Could the immediate appearance of the ambulance have come on cue? This case is not clear. It could be real, it could be staged. The media, however, assumed it was real and made it news. 15h, tout vient de basculer près de l'implantation de Netzarim dans la bande de Gaza. Let us consider another battle scene filmed that day, or possibly the day after. A Palestinian gunman fires into a hole in the wall. It looks like a tense moment of house-to-house -house fighting. We would assume he's firing at the Israelis. He is firing in their direction. But he can't be firing at them. Here he is, on the far side of the factory building, completely out of range of the Israeli position. Are Israeli soldiers inside the factory? All witnesses concur. They never left their fortified position. Earlier footage gives us a look inside the hole in the wall. The street fighter is conversing with his comrades inside the room he will soon be spraying with gunfire. A large crowd, mostly civilians, and a few men in military garb, mills around as Palestinian soldiers climb in and out of the hole in the wall. 
Note the civilians giving orders to a military man. Does this look like a war zone? Orders come to clear the area. Military men line up as if they're taking cover, but from what? Not Israeli bullets. And now, the street fighter runs up to the hole in the wall and fires into the empty room. The raw footage clearly indicates a staged scene. A sight bite became news. Consider a third scene. This funeral procession was filmed by an Israeli reconnaissance drone in the aftermath of a military operation in Jenin in April 2002. Palestinian sources claimed that the Israelis had massacred hundreds of civilians and that they had to bury their dead. In this particular case, the men accidentally tipped the funeral beer, dropping the corpse. When they regroup, the corpse climbs back on the beer. Later, a crowd has joined the procession. The pallbearers drop the man again. The crowd scatters, frightened perhaps at seeing the dead man stir with life. But the pallbearers regroup, the corpse climbs forthrightly on the bier. And once again, they wrap him in the winding sheet. Welcome to Pallywood. Pallywood is a bustling industry of alfresco cinema, stage news filmed in real time against a backdrop of a complex conflict we all think we know. It has directors, makeup men, sets, extras, often playing dead or injured, props, especially ambulances, plenty of cameramen, and sometimes large audiences. Pallywood operates according to a few basic sequences. One person fakes or exaggerates an injury and attracts a crowd, drawn from the ready and willing onlookers eager to gather at the slightest provocation. Someone waves or whistles and an ambulance appears as if on cue. Frantic men grab the casualty, sometimes causing further injury, and load him into the ambulance. The hallmarks of Pallywood are casualties that look more like football players acting for the referee than real injuries, ever-ready ambulances, and rough evacuations that would cripple or kill a truly wounded victim. Why so rough? Those evacuating the wounded seem to be in a panic. But why? Presumably, they're under Israeli fire. They certainly act as if they are. But if that were the case, wouldn't they carry the injured away from the Israeli post? Here, a group of youths runs with an apparently injured boy away from the Israelis. But when they get to the other side of the highway, an adult grabs the boy from the youths and runs him back to an ambulance waiting right in front of the Israeli post, where people stand around, apparently unafraid of Israeli guns. Consider yet another.